I'm going to share nine US stocks that I think are worth looking into for potential investment opportunities. The whole point of this video and this whole channel is just to explore new stocks and maybe bring new stocks that you previously haven't really heard about or looked into to you guys. And then you can take that stock away and do further research and make your own investment decisions. The first stock on our list today is Spotify. And the reason this one came recently into my visibility is because I was actually using Spotify and I noticed a new feature. They now have a courses section where you can take video courses on music, creativity, business, and healthy living. This seems to be a UK only release at the moment, and I can't really find any information about whether or not they are planning to expand this into other markets, but it did get me thinking that they are adapting and they are expanding. And I like those two qualities in a company. They have been growing their revenue year over year, but right now they are still not profitable. Their net income is remaining below zero at the moment. But I do understand that they are focusing and they are really pushing profitability. And apparently they are looking to increase their prices again after having increased their premium subscription prices for the first time last year. And I've also read that they are looking to launch a new basic tier that will give music and podcasts, but will not give audiobooks. Now we do have earnings coming up very, very soon on the 23rd of April before market opens, I believe. So that will be really, really interesting and definitely keep an eye on that. But from their last earnings, we saw that their monthly active users grew by 23% year over year and their premium subscribers grew by 15% year over year. And this is a really, really positive trend that we are seeing with uh, Spotify, but we obviously need to see this continue and that profitability is really going to be crucial. During their last earnings, they also gave a very strong, a very bullish outlook for Q1 2024. So we will shortly see if those numbers actually align with that outlook. You can see here that Spotify holds just over 30% of the global music streaming market, so it is a really, really big player in this industry. And of course, like with many, many companies these days, they are integrating and they are looking for ways to use artificial intelligence in their business. For example, one way in which they do this is they use their AI models to actually interpret and use data based on your behavior. And with this information, it can predict which preferences you may have and actually show you those pieces of music or audiobooks or whatever that you are more likely to click on and therefore stay on the app. Looking at Seeking Alpha here to see how Spotify has been performing compared to the S&P 500. And I'll leave a link for Seeking Alpha in the description below. You can get a seven day free trial. And then if you do like it, you do decide to commit, you'll also get money off using that link. So year to date, Spotify has been outperforming the index quite significantly. They've had a very, very good year. Over a one year period, again, absolutely fantastic. Way, way, way outperforming the index. And if we expand out to a three year period, you can see a little bit of a different picture. And then a five year period, again, outperforming the index. But like with many of these growth companies, it has been a little bit more volatile. So you do have to ask yourself two things. One, do you think this growth will continue? And two, are you willing as an investor to hold individual stocks that are going to be more volatile or would you rather put your money into an ETF, an index fund tracking the S&P 500? That will be a little bit of a less risky bet, but of course, less volatile as well. And maybe the returns won't be as significant, but you don't need to just pick one or the other. You could have a portfolio with individual stocks and maybe an ETF in there as well. Next up, we have a stock representing an extremely in demand and growing market, the cybersecurity market. With increasing digitalization and the growing complexity and number of cyber threats that companies and people are just seeing, the demand for really robust, good quality cybersecurity solutions is of course on the rise. And I think that will continue moving forward. By the way, the stock that we're speaking about is CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike are an AI powered cybersecurity technology company, and they're known for providing cloud-based services to protect against cyber threats, including malware, ransomware, and national state attacks as well. The company's flagship product is called CrowdStrike Falcon, and this uses advanced threat intelligence and endpoint security to detect and respond to cyber threats. This company actually only went public in 2019, so it's still very, very early days, but they have been able to grow their revenue every single year since. And excitingly, they announced that they had a net income that was positive, so profitable for the first time in Q2 
2023. And they've also been able to keep up a really strong dollar-based net retention rate, which is just indicating consistent sales growth from existing consumers, existing customers. This just tells us that they are providing true value. They have a really strong balance sheet overall. And although there are many competitors in this space, they have been able to grow sales at a faster rate than most, if not all of those competitors. Now, with the interest in everything AI, it is, you know, it's no surprise that CrowdStrike stock has had a fantastic, fantastic time recently, year to date up by 17.17% outperform the index. But let's expand to a little bit of a longer time period. Here you go, a one year time period, absolutely dominating in terms of return. We'll expand to a three year period and you can see, you know, it's been a little bit all over the place. And since January 2023, a massive, massive explosion has been seen, probably due to just the interest and the need for this sort of product. And then when we go to a five year period, just so you can fully see the picture here, a fantastic, fantastic return. So now you have to ask yourselves, do you think this stock is worth buying right now? Or do you actually see a dip for this one coming and you might want to hold off? Personally, I don't really like to try and time the market at all. I just focus on good quality companies, understanding those companies, doing the research. And then I normally take a dollar cost averaging approach, but I always have some cash on the side to load up more when I see one of my stocks at a good buying opportunity. Before we move on to stock number three, I just want to remind you in case you're new to this channel that I do have two workshops that you can actually get involved with. And there will be more to come very, very soon. So if you are interested in taking some of my workshops in the future, please, please, please make sure you are subscribed to my weekly newsletter because that is the place I will share information first. And if it is a paid workshop, I will also give early bird discounts to the people on my newsletter list. Anyway, currently I have one paid and one free workshop. The free one is a one hour, 15 minute or so video workshop where I try to help people with risk tolerance, risk capacity and strategies for managing and growing a portfolio and much, much more. My paid workshop is a little bit more intense and definitely not for the lighthearted. It's for people that are really, really serious about gaining confidence and enhancing their investing research abilities. It's a four hour or so video workshop where I will take some through the whole process of finding and researching stocks. The whole point of that workshop is to help people become more confident and actually have a blueprint to research in stocks, which you absolutely must have if you are holding individual companies. We've had some amazing reviews for both of these workshops so far. So if you wanna get involved with one or even both of them, I will leave links in the description below. Okay, the next stock is one that is quickly becoming a lot of people's favorite new stock to back. And I think for good reason, there is a really, really bullish story here and some great, great figures to back up that narrative. Now I won't talk in detail about this one because I have covered them a number of times. So we'll keep this nice and concise and nice and short. The company in question is SoFi, which is of course a FinTech stock. SoFi, the word actually stands for social financing and they have a mission to help their users achieve financial freedom, which fully, fully aligns with what I want to do myself and what I'm trying to inspire people to do by making these videos. They operate in three main areas. So they have lending, they have their financial services and they have their tech tech platform called Galileo. Now, SoFi only went public really, really recently in the summer of 2021. And since then, this stock is down by over 71% from all time highs. So it has been a really, really volatile ride for those early shareholders. But I do think this is a business with really strong, good growth potential. The numbers to back this up look absolutely fantastic. And the valuation right now, in my opinion, is quite appealing. So just some quick things that I really like about this company. They have been able to grow their members consistently. It's wonderful and it's still growing. Their net income was positive for the first time in Q4. This was the first profitable quarter that they've had. Will this continue? I think it probably will. But if it does continue and we keep seeing them announce more and more profitable quarters, I really don't think the stock will stay under $10 for all that long. Of course, like with anyone, I don't know what's going to happen with this stock. I can't predict the market. No one can. And number three, I think this company has fantastic leadership and they are making some really, really big moves. Recently, their tech platform Galileo actually partnered with Rapid Finance to launch the Rapid Access MasterCard. And this is the first program that is sponsored by SoFi Bank. Like I said, it's been a rough time for the stock recently, year to date down by nearly 28%. Over a one year period, pretty much uh, the same performance as the S&P 500. And then over a three year period, 
down by nearly 56%. And quite often, you know, psychologically speaking, it's really hard to continue to buy a stock when it keeps going down. But if you've done your research, you're convicted, maybe this is a really, really good buying opportunity. The fourth stock on our list today is not one that I've personally got in my own portfolio, but my dad has recently been adding this one to his portfolio. It is Netflix. Netflix is a household name. And one thing that I really, really like and I appreciate about Netflix from the point of an investor, definitely not from the standpoint of a consumer, is their recent password crackdown. And the crazy thing about this is that this could have gone one of two ways. They could have had, you know, a real wipeout in terms of the number of users. People could have just said, do you know what? Fine, I'll go elsewhere. But actually quite the opposite thing happened. People paid for a membership. People didn't want to go anywhere else because they don't want to lose access to Netflix. And what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that Netflix are doing something right. They are providing value enough in some way that people actually don't want to go and can't go elsewhere. So they will pay to keep Netflix. Now, from this image here, we can see that they do seem to be losing a little bit of market share as time goes on with the number of different competitors out there but I do think they will remain as a dominant player in this industry. And one reason that I think that is because they have really, really high retention rates. They also have industry leading revenue per user, and this has also been growing. Like I've already said, they have been cracking down on a password sharing and they have sustained subscriber growth. They also now have a lower price tier and this tier actually comes with ads. So if you opt to pay the lower amount as a viewer, you will get ads during your Netflix watching time. But what does this mean? Well, with more viewers actually opt in for that ad lower price tier, more companies will therefore want to place ads on Netflix. This then means that there's more demand and Netflix can increase their advertising costs. And on top of all this, Netflix have a lot of really, really, really in demand Disney shows coming to them in 2024. Year to date, Netflix has been doing very, very well, up by nearly 27% outperforming the index. Over a one year period, a similar picture outperforming the index and doing very well. Three years, not so pretty, but not awful. And over the last five years, pretty much actually matching the index. We can expand to a 10 year period and you can see that although there has been some significant sell-offs, it must've been very, very brutal for any shareholders. It does seem to be going in the upward direction again now. And over a 10 year period has returned investors a phenomenal amount of money. So with stock number five on the list today, I recently made an entire video about this company that I will leave linked on the screen up here or up here, I can never remember. So do check that out if you are interested. This company is New Holdings. It is another fintech company, a bit like SoFi, but this one in particular is focused on the Latin American market. And I think the market that this company is operating in, well, New Bank, which is a company that sits under the old holding company, New Holdings, is one of the main bullish reasons as to why you should maybe do some more research into this company. More than half of the adult population in Brazil is already using Nubank, which is absolutely crazy. And honestly, they have been seeing wonderful, wonderful growth. But apparently now they are looking further afield. They are looking to invest $100 million to expand themselves within the Mexican market. And they are also looking to take on Colombia as well. And these markets are some with a big unbanked population meaning there is a lot of growth potential and a lot of scope. If you want to find out more about this company, like I said, please, please, please do watch my recent video. You will find out a lot more details, some of the figures and numbers to back that up in that video. Okay, so what's been happening in terms of the stock price? At the moment, New Holdings is trading for $10.84 per share. The market's currently closed as I'm filming this, but around that sort of figure. Year to date, doing really, really well. There has been a little bit of a dip recently, actually, but overall, year to date up by 30.13%. One year, it's honestly been fantastic. Those of you who saw this company, maybe after, you know, Warren Buffett adding this one, but those of you who started investing a year ago, clapping for you because you saw the numbers, you saw the potential and it's paid off. Three years, let's have a look here. Not full information because they only went public very, very recently. But you can see that as we see a lot of times, and I mention this in pretty much every video, when a company has had a DPO or an IPO very recently, what we tend to see is a big, big spike in stock price. And then it comes down and we have to wait for that to then recover. 
So always be aware of that when you're thinking about investing into a company that has recently had an IPO. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites, one of the companies that I am most bullish on, Tesla. Look, it has not been an easy time for Tesla and Tesla shareholders recently. No doubt it's been tough. And I'm starting to think that you actually learn more emotional intelligence and mindset management skills from investing into Tesla than you do in most jobs. But I personally just don't see a world where Tesla at the current price of $157 a share or whatever it is, is going to be a regret in five years time. Of course, I don't know that, this is not financial advice, but just based on my own research, my own conviction into this company, I just can't see that happening with everything that they're working on. Tesla are in a bit of a funny, unique position right now. And that is one where they are shifting into their next growth stage. And the narrative is trying to catch up with that. This next growth stage is one of autonomy, you know, with the robo taxi fleet and then eventually with Optimus as well and energy storage. And they have been reorganizing and streaming the business ready for this. And you've probably seen some of the staff layoffs that have been happening recently. I think that Tesla is going to become one of the top three largest companies. I think they will have the majority of their revenue in the form of SaaS margin revenue streams. And I think that their revenue streams will just look vastly different in a few years time to what they do now. But I also think that it's gonna be really, really volatile and quite difficult for a while longer for us Tesla shareholders. Recently, I made a whole video about the robo taxi and everything that's been going on with Tesla on my main channel. 41,000 people have already watched that video so far. So if you want to go and watch that, I will leave it linked on the screen now. And also subscribe to my main channel if you haven't already, if you are particularly interested in Tesla and or Palantir. Okie dokie, so year to date, <laughs> I've already said it, it's been pretty rough, down by nearly 37% underperforming the index. One year time period, down by 16%, again, underperforming the index. And you know, we've got the um, earnings coming up very, very soon. So we'll have to see how those, those go. You know, it could get a little bit more rocky from here. But let me just remind you, when we expand out to a five-year period and a 10-year period, you can see just the power that this company has returned investors. But, you know, you've got to be in this one for the long run. You've got to see the vision. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to carry on buying and you're going to get very freaked out with all these volatile movements. Again, just my opinion. So talking about Palantir, that is actually the next one on the list today. And this is another position that I'm particularly bullish on for the long term. Now, I'm quite fortunate when it comes to my Palantir position. You know, I was adding this stock at the $7 range when no one else cared. But having said that, I still think this company and therefore the stock has a lot of growth left in it. People always ask me, do you think it's too late to invest into Palantir? Well, if your outlook and your time horizon is long, no, I don't think so at all. I think it's very, very early days. And we have to remind ourselves that Palantir only went public in like September 2020. So we're not even four years in yet. So this is kind of like, you know, Amazon in 2000 or Tesla in 2013 very early days. So much stuff is happening with Palantir as it has been for a while now. You know, we are seeing both commercial and government contracts pop up all the time. And some of them are massive, massive deals. And when I say massive deals, this could be revenue wise, it could be really big, or it could be really massive in terms of its significance, or in some cases, both. If you do any research into Palantir, it will become very, very clear to you how wide the industry reach is for Palantir. And that's really exciting. Their total addressable market is big and the scope for growth is therefore very, very large. If you want more about Palantir, please, please check out my main channel. It's been a great year so far for Palantir, but if we expand out to a one year period, it's been an even better time up by a hundred, nearly 150%, way, way, way outperforming the index. And one thing that I particularly enjoyed is this jump right here that happened around the 5th of February, which I believe was because, yeah, it was, it was because of their fantastic, fantastic earnings. And you know, this stock may be added to the S&P 500 very soon. It didn't get added last time, but it could come. It's only a matter of time, really. It's a when, not if, in my opinion. Three years, let's expand. We can see that, you know, it's kind of not done anything in a three year period. And that's just because it had a big peak during the, uh, the DPO that happened here. And it's been down a little bit and then it's been recovering ever since. Next up is another tech company, but this one so far this year has been down by nearly 20%. A lot of the stock price downward movement that we have been seeing with this stock was actually caused by their most recent earnings where they reported a 50% drop in net income 
from the year ago quarter, if that makes sense, from the, the same quarter one year ago. This company is Adobe. At the back end of last year, I believe it was, they also scrapped their Figma acquisition. And because of this, they had to pay $1 billion dollars in termination fees. And as well as this, their guidance wasn't that strong. So obviously all of these factors combined did cause quite a sell-off. But despite all this, I do think it's worth looking into this company and just seeing what you think. They have still been able to consistently grow their revenue and they have a good AI roadmap, but they have made it very, very clear to investors that it might take a while and we need to be patient before we actually see AI monetization. I think it's a given that generative AI tools will add to people's productivity. So if they can keep innovating and growing their offerings, I think their services, their um, their products will be in demand. I do think that a lot of people are worried that Adobe's customers will reduce because they think that AI will replace a lot of the creative jobs and therefore the demand will decrease. But actually, I think it will be a case where new jobs are formed. So as long as Adobe can stay ahead of the game and keep innovating and keep growing and keep staying, you know, ahead of the market in that sense, I think they'll do okay. So let's take a look at Adobe stock and how it's been performing. But do let me know if you have this one in your portfolio and if you are bullish for this long term, because I don't really hear about that many people that actually hold Adobe in their portfolio. Year to date down by just over 20% underperforming the index. Over a one year period, pretty much matching the index, doing slightly better, 26%. Three year period, not all that great, but you know, I've seen worse for sure, down by 9.3% five years, pretty much again, matching the index, but way, way, way more volatile. 10 years doing really, really well. 666%. Isn't that like the devil's number? <laughs> And then if we max out here, we can see that it has been very, very good, but we've had some really, really dramatic drops that have been very, very brutal to shareholders, I'm sure. Number nine and the last one on our list today is a company that offer one of the fastest growing e-commerce platforms. Shopify. Shopify are one of those companies that are positioned very, very well to benefit from the upward trend that we're seeing in the population actually starting online businesses, starting side hustles. And they have already seen this, they've already capitalized on this very well. And I think they'll continue to do so moving forward. Their revenue growth has been quite impressive and it's happened over a short period of time. And this can be attributed to higher demand, strong customer retention, high engagement rates, and much, much more. And remember that this is an asset light business, meaning that it has less expenses and higher margins. But so far, the profitability has been a little bit all over the place. Let me just point out some really bullish things that I'm seeing from Shopify. So number one, their yearly increases to gross merchandise volume. This just means that the total value of all sales made through the Shopify platform has consistently grown each year. And this is a metric that is a key indicator of the platform's health and growth because it's reflecting both the increase in numbers of transactions and potentially the expanding size of each sale made by merchants using Shopify. They've also been increasing monthly recurring revenue and gross payment volume. And one thing that I've noticed as well is you've now got massive, massive people with a lot of reach like Mr. Beast, like Ryan Trahan, actually using this platform and promoting it to their audiences. Now, of course, we have Amazon, which is a massive, massive beast in the e-commerce um, in the e-commerce space. But I do think Shopify are a little bit different and they're positioning themselves to a slightly different audience. So I don't necessarily think that just because we have Amazon, there is no room for Shopify. Shopify's integration of generative AI tools like Sidekick and Magic in my opinion, show that they are a forward thinking company. These AI tools aim to simplify and optimize the online business operations for merchants, which could then potentially increase their attractiveness and help retain users. Year to date, Shopify has underperformed the index. Over a one year period, it's been very different. It's basically um, doubled what the index has given investors. Three year period, not so great. A very, very big sell-off was happening here. Five-year period, you know, it's been quite a story. Look at this. Absolutely phenomenal up until this sort of point here. When was that? Um, 
I have to do the dates backwards because I'm not American. The 15th of November 2021, massive, massive sell off. And it's sort of been trading sideways a little bit. And now it's starting seemingly to recover. So I'm just going to quickly look whilst we're on here. I didn't do this for all the other stocks, but I'm just interested. Let's see what Seeking Alpha has to say about the growth potential. So it's given it a growth grade of A+. Plus. Revenue growth year over year, A minus, very good. And forward looking and A minus as well. And profitability is also looking strong. And if we just go to the main summary here, we can see that the ratings are coming out as two holds and a buy. And just looking at this analysis section, which is one of the reasons I love Seeking Alpha actually, it does look to be very mixed. Some people are recommending a strong buy on this one, others saying sell, others saying hold. So, you know, it, it's a bit of a bipolar stock by the looks of it, but just do your own research, of course. Do let me know if you hold any of these stocks in your own portfolio or if any are on your watch list at the moment. And remember, if you want to take part in any of my workshops, I will leave them linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, keep analyzing, keep investing, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.